Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to take another look at the phase angle. But here we're going to do it relative to a phase diagram. Here we have a phase diagram. Remember, phase diagrams rotate like this, counterclockwise. This is the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage across the inductor. Notice that they're always 180 degrees out of phase. So when you add up the voltages of the inductor and the capacitor together, they will kind of cancel each other out, like two vectors in opposite directions. But since, in this case, the voltage across the capacitor is a greater value than the voltage across the inductor, when you add the two together vectorially, you can see there's some net result right here. We then add the voltage across the capacitor inductor together with the voltage across the resistor vectorially, and you'll get the voltage across the whole circuit. Now, what is the phase angle? First, first of all, omega t simply tells you where the voltage across the resistor is at any moment in time, assuming that it's here horizontally when t is equal to zero. Omega simply is the radial frequency of the oscillation of the, um, of the oscillating voltage right here. Remember that omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency of the, of the oscillator. The frequency would be the number of cycles per second, and omega, of course, is the number of radians per second. So omega t tells you the position as a function of time of the voltage across the resistor in the phase diagram. And then also realize that the current in the circuit is always exactly in phase with the voltage across the resistor. So they have the same angle at any point in time as this phase diagram rotates. The, the distance, the angular distance to the voltage across the resistor is the same as the angular distance to the current in the circuit. But what is the voltage across the whole circuit? What is the voltage across the voltage source or the voltage across the whole circuit? Well, that falls in line in the same direction, we're talking in terms of phasors, as the impedance in the circuit. And notice that in this case, since the voltage across the capacitor was larger than the voltage across the inductor, and oh, this should say V sub, uh, v sub L, not V sub X. So that's voltage across the inductor, that's voltage across the capacitor, and so this should say V sub L minus V sub C. Good thing I just caught that error right there. So since the voltage across this component, the capacitor is larger than the voltage across the inductor, you would expect the capacitor reactance to be bigger than the uh, inductive reactance, and so therefore this whole circuit acts more like a capacitive circuit. And in a capacitive circuit, the current will lead the voltage, will be ahead of the voltage in the capacitive circuit, so you can see the current is ahead of the voltage. Since the omega t is always relative to the horizontal axis and gives you the angular distance to the current or the angular distance to the voltage across the resistor, with respect to that, where, where is the voltage in time or in phase relative to that current? So the voltage across the circuit, notice, lags the current because the current leads the voltage, and the phase angle is that difference. And the phase angle is always measured from where the current is at to where the voltage across the circuit is at. So in this case, since it's pointing in a clockwise direction, opposite to the rotation of the phaser, that means, therefore, that's a negative phase angle. And the way we find that, we can say that the phase angle is equal to the arctangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side. The opposite side would be the reactance divided by the resistance. And so that would be equal to the arctangent of uh, X sub L minus X sub C divided by resistance. And notice that X sub L is a smaller number than X sub C. This will become a negative number, and the arctangent negative number is a negative angle. And so that's where you get a negative phase angle. That is, if X sub L is smaller than X sub C. Well, in the same way, we can use the equation that is also equal to the arctangent of V sub L minus V sub C divided by V sub R because we know that the voltages are directly proportional to the reactances and the resistance of the three components. So we can find the phase angle in the exact same way by using voltages rather than using reactance and resistance. And you can see in this case, again, V sub L is uh, smaller than V sub C. That will be a negative number, so therefore we have a negative phase angle, which means in this case the voltage lags the current. And that's what we mean by the phase angle, and now you know how you can find it. So this will enable you now to find the phase angle of a circuit. You can see that you can find the phase angle using reactance and resistance and the phase angle using the voltages across the three components. And that's how we do that.